like life and death, moon and sun, it's sure to each the piper comes. And while God and Goddess give for free, down below there will be fees. Despite perfect love and perfect trust, there's no way around it, cash is a must. We've sought within, but come up short, so we come to thee, your help to court. If you would aid this temple's life, a three dollar donation would be nice. Remember well that gifts when sent, return threefold of what was spent. But if you can't, well blessed be, we shall survive, so mote it be. Merry meet YouTube, this is Lady Nephthys of Universal's Pagan Temple, here with week 16 of Wicca, A Year and a Day in Magic. Now this week we'll be learning all about your Book of Shadows. Now you see here, this is a very simple notebook. This, or something like this, could be your Book of Shadows. Now a Book of Shadows is some, is a book, usually a journal, lined like this. Um, it's basically a journal of everything that you learn, or it could be a teaching guide. Now this is my teaching book of shadows I used to teach others with. And you can have things like your wheel of the year, so anything that you learn about. It could be a journal of what you do on each of the Sabbaths. And you can have the uh, reads, creeds, and laws. So here I have the 42 negative confessions of Egyptian uh, myth. And then I have the Wiccan read. So it's all up to you whether you want the Wiccan read to be at the front of your Book of Shadows or you would rather start off with uh, a section on the goddesses or gods that you worship or work with. You see I have a nice deer here and I'll show you in a minute where I learned to do this. And you can have your magical symbols also. Now also your Book of Shadows is a tool for you to use because we're not all computers here and you're not going to remember everything that you learn unfortunately. Although I know some of us would like to. But it'll be a good tool for you to use in case you forget about anything. Alright, and see I've started making our, my goddess section here. And you can separate them by pantheons here. You see I start with the Egyptian pantheon. My primary pantheon I work with. And then I move on to the Greek pantheon. I have a lovely image of Gaia. Now either you could draw if you have the talent to, or you could print things out from online. Now there are various tutorials online, either a video or a text form on how to make a beautiful book of shadows. Now you guys may be familiar with the movie Practical Magic and their book of shadows. Now you can find those to buy online and they are just lovely and wonderful, but uh, for some that might be something you want to work up to. Now your Book of Shadows is something you won't be completing overnight. It'll take you years to make one. But it is just a wonderful tool to to have for yourself and also if the rest of your, your family is pagan or if you intend on raising your children Wiccan or pagan, it'd be something to hand down to them. And it's also quite a bit of a work of art. Now I have my spells here. Book of Shadows also for putting spells in, as you guys might know, the uh, TV show Charm, they had a Book of Shadows there, and I've got kind of a cheat sheet kind of here of uh, magical intentions of certain items, so I've got my health and healing, and under that I can look up herbs for health and healing and stones for health and healing, as well as business, wealth, and money. It's basically just a wonderful kind of like index. So if you don't have the time to memorize all these things, well here you go. And here are a few money spells right here. Uh, let's get on to the last. Oh, and a little more here. A little uh, index of magical colors and their uses. And you can also put rituals in your books of shadows as well. Now the thing is with Book of Shadows is that most witches, pagans, and wiccans 
Now, Pagans, you don't have to use a Book of Shadows unless uh, you want to, but most Wiccans have at least <laughs> three to four Books of Shadows. They're kind of hoarders. Now, for me, I've got a primary one that I put all my nice things in. You know, it's my finalized one. And then I have one that I put notes in of things I learned throughout the day or throughout my studies that I'll add to my final Book of Shadows. And then there's one that's a diary. And then some Wiccans and witches might have a dream diary that they keep next to their bed that they consider a Book of Shadows. Now, a Book of Shadows, as you might know from the name, shadows meant to be something secretive. Now, the Book of Shadows was kept a secret during the burning times when it was necessary to. And some witches and Wiccans will refuse to show you their Books of Shadows because it's something very personal to them. Now, this Book of Shadows right here, it's not very personal to me. Um, well, it is, but it doesn't have any personal information, you know, that I wouldn't want anybody to see. So you can have one that's more of a public one, or if you're in a coven, you can have a Book of Shadows that is a coven Book of Shadows that's shared by the coven, and the coven adds to it. But let me show you a wonderful tool. If you can find this book or a book like it, uh, Celtic Art. Now, a lot of uh, pagans and witches are very drawn to Celtic knotwork. And books like these will teach you how to do it. Now, it's harder than it looks, actually. But it's very rewarding, and it looks so beautiful in your final Book of Shadows. Now, these are mostly from the Book of Kells. You can just see all the different things that you can do. The lettering that I use on some of the pages in there. Just absolutely gorgeous. And you can make your Book of Shadows into a piece of art. And then you don't have to have a book or a notebook because this is the digital age. You can have a Book of Shadows online. Some people, I've even noticed, have their Book of Shadows on Pinterest, or you can have it in your hard drive. There are many uh, spells online that are in picture form, and that you can just put into a file and have a kind of like a green, paperless Book of Shadows. That's also okay to do, but sometimes it's just nice to have a physical one. Now, your assignment for this week is, if you haven't already started on a Book of Shadows, to start one. You can find a uh, cheap notebook, such as this one, or you can buy a nice leather-bound one, if you're willing to put that time, uh, type of money into such a purchase. Or you can create one on Pinterest or on your computer. Um, but for next week, week 17, we'll be learning about various pantheons. So we'll be starting with the Egyptian pantheon. So until next time, blessed be.